Well, let's return now to Hong Kong, where Chinese President Xi Jinping has led a ceremony marking 25 years since the end of British rule there. In a speech, he said true democracy began after the territory was handed back. But the government has been cracking down on free speech in recent years in direct opposition to the agreement signed in 1997. Well, I'm joined now by Lord Patton, Lord Chris Patton, who was the last governor of Hong Kong and was at that handover ceremony in 1997. Lord Patton, thank you very much for joining us uh, at BBC News today. And um, let's begin by going back 25 years and uh, your reflections on that time and what your, your hopes and your expectations were for Hong Kong. Well, the words I spoke then, <clears throat> saying that it was now Hong Kong's destiny to be run by the people of Hong Kong, um, have turned to ashes because Hong Kong was once one of the freest, probably arguably the freest and most open society in Asia. And it's now been turned into a police state, as several uh, of our newspapers have said. And there's a number of journalists who work here and elsewhere who were in Hong Kong and know that's true. And when, the, um, when Xi Jinping, who didn't, of course, uh, have the courage to, even to stay in Hong Kong overnight for some reason, uh, when Xi Jinping talks about democracy starting with China's takeover, I'm reminded of what one of the um, uh, Quislings in Hong Kong once said to the Foreign Affairs Committee here about democracy. He said, you get us wrong. He said, the Chinese don't dislike um, democratic elections. They just like to know the result in advance, which is rather the point, I think. So what's happened in Hong Kong, it's not just um, that locking up Democrats, it not, it's not just uh, making sure that the elections couldn't produce a result which uh, represented the, the opinions of people in the, in, the, in the city and the territory. It's not just that, it's the, what, the attack on freedom of speech, it's the attacks on civil society. And this year, people weren't allowed to take part in what's been uh, a tradition of, of vigils for those murdered in Tiananmen because the Chinese want us to pretend that that never happened. And when I read the introduction, Lord Patton, and uh, uh, I referenced uh, what Xi Jinping had said, that true democracy began after the territory was handed back, I could sense a, a shudder from you when I, when I read that. Yes, well, it's, it's of course completely absurd. Um, uh, I don't think uh, uh, Xi Jinping would, would know a democratic election if it hit him over the head with a, with a police truncheon. Um, the truth is that one of the reasons why the Chinese communists passed what's called the national security law which in effect um, put Hong Kong into handcuffs one of the reasons why they did that was they were terrified of the likely outcome of legislative council elections in 2020. What were the protections supposed to be? Well the protections largely depended on uh, the Chinese communists sticking to their word in the joint declaration. The joint declaration was an international tre treaty lodged at the United Nations in which they guaranteed to retain Hong Kong's freedoms and way of life for 50 years after 1997. Now, <clears throat> one, of our, one of my main critics when uh, I was uh, in Hong Kong was a former diplomat who once said memorably, the Chinese may be thuggish dictators, but they're men of their word. Well, now we know that the first part of that is true, but alas, not the last part. And they've broken their agreement uh, again and again, not just in relation to Hong Kong, but in relation to World Trade Organization, um, the WHO, uh, the uh, fortification of atolls and islands in the South China Sea, Xinjiang and so on. Um, they're mendacious and unfortunately you can't trust them. But we do have to find ways in which we can cope with um, this regime until it eventually implodes. Um, what are your thoughts as well on John Lee, who's taken over from Carrie Lam in, in charge of Hong Kong, and, and he um, has praised the security law, that hugely controversial security law. We've covered here on BBC News the protests around that, the arrests that have been made of pro-democracy supporters, and he was praising that law, which has been used to, to stifle dissent. What, what do you make of him? Well, he's a thuggish cop. Um, and he got the job because he was responsible for the policing of the huge demonstrations in 2019 against an extradition tr treaty, which was going to enable Hong Kong to send people off to mainland China to be tried if, 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 they wanted, if, the, if the Chinese wanted them. So um, he got the job because of the very, very tough policing then. Um, tasers, um, uh, plastic baton rounds, 
tear gas instead of trying to talk to people and find a political settlement. <clears throat> Boris Johnson has said we are not giving up on Hong Kong. Um, wh what do you think the UK government should do now in relation to Hong Kong what, what, that it's not doing already or trying to well, do no, already? I, th I think the Hong Kong government, um, sorry, I think the Hong Kong government is, is, is a bunch of quizzlings. I think the British government has, and I'm not always without my criticisms of the British government, the British government has done pretty well by Hong Kong in the last couple of years. I think providing a route for people who wanted to come and live here uh, to do so, I think that's been very important. I'd like that to be slightly extended so that younger people can come here as well. And what's important is to go on saying to our friends, the Americans, the Europeans and others, Australians, um, that we should always go on speaking out about Hong Kong. Um, but, if... but in terms of affecting change in Hong Kong itself, I mean, that looks like a... Uh, a, a pretty dim prospect, doesn't it? It's, it's very difficult to do without change happening in Beijing. And uh, we have limited uh, ability to secure that. But there's no question that we have to go on speaking out about Hong Kong when things are going wrong there. Um, and if we don't anticipate a change in Beijing, um, the long-term prospects for Hong Kong then? Uh, do, well, do, you, do, you, do you imagine that it's going to ever get back to even being... Uh, an iota of what it was when you the, were there. The, the one truth about totalitarian states is when they, is they implode eventually, and when they implode, it all happens very quickly, as happened with the Soviet Union. Um, so uh, I think that history, the arc of history, is on the side of economic and political freedom. What we have to do is go on working together as liberal democracies to point out when China and Russia are behaving badly and to make sure that without trying to contain them, because that wouldn't be a sensible thing to do. We constrain their bad behaviour. And part of the constraining their bad behaviour is to point out whenever they behave appallingly badly in Hong Kong. OK, uh, Lord Patton, Chris Patton, uh, the last governor of Hong Kong, thank you very much for your time today.